Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, as promised, I did a remix of the uh, of the gauge holder, the dial indicator holder for bed leveling uh, in, that uh, I was talking about in my last video. And so what I did is, uh, actually I did a couple prototypes, and, and what I decided to do was to go with the whole mounting here rather than the, you know, take the back off and stick it in there type thing. So um, it would be a little bit easier to mount. You didn't have to go through all that, and I didn't have to do all that. And it, you know, prints again like this on the bed, so it comes out pretty good. The other piece I did, and this is one of the earlier prototypes, and, and again, I ended up cracking it trying to put it on, so I, I glued it. Um, so, however, after doing this version, I did this version, and one of the things that you notice, I put stress relief so it can expand a little bit both in this side and this side. And then what I did is I took and as I was fitting it on here, it was, was pretty tight. And it still is tight. Uh, however, it fits on there nicely is I um, hit it with a heat gun as I was putting it on and it gave it just that little bit of extra uh, coaxing to, to fit snugly around my particular motor setting. So that's what I would highly recommend. And see, let's see if I can move the camera around so you can see the gauge a little bit. And you see this, let's uh, let's turn this on and do some. Now, one of the things while this is starting up I did do is I put a series of holes here. Uh, let me get my other digital gauge. Is the idea is, is you could, you can you arrange this uh, depending upon your gauge and height, up or down. So um, it actually works out pretty good uh, to be able to set it to, to different heights, if you will, depending on the gauge. You can set it way up here, set it here, and basically, uh, there's that word, basically again. Uh, in short, I use a quarter 20 bolt to go through here. I think about an inch and a quarter bolt that I put through here. Taps nicely into the plastic, holds it solid. Actually, if you don't want to, now I use the nut here. You don't really even have to use a nut if you do the quarter 20. Uh, however, let's do quick settings. Let's just home this. So, uh, we'll go down and we'll home this. Now, I decided on this one to do, do the dial indicator rather than the digital indicator. And see it probably dial indicator moving. And so what I'll do is I, I'm not going to do all this this on camera. How, however, now see that's interesting. See I'm going to have to adjust this up because I basically bottomed out the gauge uh, here. So this is actually going to have to go up one. So this is a good thing. However, what I was going to mention is um, in, in this what I'm going to do is to is use my paper alignment. Um, on the first one and then carry it and then move this back release the the motors and have this move back um, I'm gonna move this up a second um, so so I'm I want to uh, so then what I'll do is I'll, I'll measure this I'll center or zero this out remember this this knob over here allows me to zero the gauge I'll zero that out and then uh, come back. Well, I tell you what, l let me go. I'm going to adjust this nut and then let's uh, try it again and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've adjusted this up and so now you can see I've got some pretty good movement here that I can move the, uh, the rod on and so it's in there. And uh, so one of the first things I want to do, well, is um, I'm gonna turn this off so you don't have to listen to this fan switch. Is um, is I have this this paper that I use for my uh, you know basically paper setting. There's that word again. Um, anyhow, this this is uh, 80. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an 80 pound bond cards light cardstock. So what I do is the reason I use this. Is this is about 0.23 millimeters uh, in thickness, 
And so my first layer height is set to be point two, you know, about point 0.2. So if I have, so like sliding this under, you, you'll see it takes a bit of friction to get underneath there. So that means I'm about point 0.2 in my layer height. And then if I move it over here, you can see that I'm I'm way off. So what I'm going to do is, is you notice I kicked my gauge off, ran off the end. So I'm going to go back over here. So I'm pretty good setting here, and it's pretty light about right there. So I'm going to adjust this up a little bit because this is about where I'm going to take my zero setting for my gauge. Uh, so I've got to loosen this up a little bit more. And that's pretty snug. Now, one of the things is with this aluminum bed, I, I can tell you right now there's going to be dips in this bed. So, uh, so I got a pretty good setting there. And then, so what I'm going to do is take this gauge and turn my zero. I'm assuming you can see this. Put my zero setting right about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over. Now see, see now it's it's actually going down as I move it over. So I'm going to take it over here to this edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this so I'm back to zero. Now one of the things you know, I, I, I think you can see it that I'm lifting up on this bed. Because sometimes the springs don't don't fully release on this, so I'm gonna check. Yeah, I got a pretty good fit. It could be a little bit tighter, and I'm still a little bit off of my zero. And again, I want to lift up on on that bed a little bit to make sure. And again, I'm gonna just double check with the paper. Yep, it's a pretty good fit. So now, one of the things that I now know, especially as I'm moving this through here, is is I'm I'm, I'm got I've got a pretty good. So this this gauge right now is pretty much calibrated to about uh, 0.2 millimeters, not reads in inches. But, however, my point is, is I've set this roughly with the paper test to point two. So now, as I pull it to the back, as I bring the back forward, uh, my back isn't too bad. So what I do is, is I would reach back there and adjust it, adjust the back, and it's kind of a pain. Uh, I'm not going to do it on camera. I have to walk around, and then you probably won't be able to hear me. However, again, I'm going to run this now to the other side. And, and again, see, you can see that the bed on the back here is actually quite a ways off. Now, now this is interesting. My gauge might have moved a little bit. So I want to retest. So I've got a pretty snug fit. So I want to recalibrate my zero. Now, now, the one thing to keep in mind, this thing is not perfect because you can see how much I'm moving this head just by this movement. And so again, I'm pulling the back forward. So that's not too far out. I, I would adjust it up a little bit. And then again, And moving it. See, see, it's running around zero now. Watch. I, I hope, hopefully, you can see this as I'm getting closer to the edge. It's it's sort of running up, so I'm running off there. So again, like I say, you know the, um, you know these aluminum beds, they, you know, they definitely have sags and warps to them. And also, the other piece is, um, this, uh, it's not Biltec brand. However, again, I guess it's like for mica. Um, it's going to have divots in it from plastic and adhesion. 
because you can kind of see it moving a couple thousandths of an inch as I move this back and forth over where there was a piece of uh, TPU put. However, the, my whole point out of this is, is again, getting the bed level is probably the most critical thing you can do. Now, the other piece is, is I had some folks make, make a, a comment about how often should you do this. I typically do this about once every four to six prints, and I do it every print where it's a serious print, like I, where I need the part to come out as a high quality part. Because what happens when you start getting underneath here using this scraper and prying and twisting, you're moving this bed and you're putting pressure, and you know, aluminum is not, you know, too sturdy to begin with. And on top of it, it's, it's hot, and you can kind of see me just pressing on here how much that gauge is moving. Yeah, you can see it. And, and so, again, just think about some of the times you get on here with a lot of force. You know, you're changing the compression on the springs, and, and again, um, I'd probably do some changing and probably will do some changing on the springs and screws of, of, of this bed um, in the near future. I'm just having too much fun playing with this thing. i, I got to tell you, I've had the Da Vinci's for a long time. However, this thing's a lot more fun than the Da Vinci's. Uh, just in the flexibility of what you can print with it, the different filaments, and, and just the overall quality. Um, I'm not sure if you can see. So I printed this on the Da Vinci at, at, at a 2.0 layer height. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have anything here that I printed on this in a 2.0 layer height. However, my point is, is the print quality of this is far better than the DaVinci. And I think pro probably part of the problem is the XYZ crapware um, in, in the slicing. Because now what I've done is, is, if you probably watched some of the other videos, I've done sort of a side-loading hack where you can use a uh, Repetier slicer to actually slice and load into convert uh, to a 3W file and load it in DaVinci and I get a lot better print. So it's not the physical machine. I, I probably need to be clear about that. Uh, however, it is the, the software that runs the machine that, that is problematic. So um, anyways, just been having a lot of fun with this and I really like this. I'm going to throw this up on Thingiverse as a remix. Uh, hopefully you have a good time with it. I know it's really helped me in, in getting good bed levels on this and so hopefully it'll help you too so if you found this interesting hey give it a thumbs up if, even if you didn't like it give it a thumbs up click that thumbs up button down there i see you hovering over it just go ahead click it and hey we'll see you in some more videos cheers don't forget to subscribe to the channel